let's see how can we form a frustum of a cone with the cone itself this is a cone we have sliced by a plane that was parallel to the base so this is are the two separated parts of the cone now this left over part is the frustum of a cone so what did we do you can see that we took the cone and we sliced it by a plane that was parallel to the base now this cone separated into two the above part is the smaller cone whereas the below part is called the frustum of a cone so this is how we get frustum of a cone from the cone itself now you can see that this is an inverted cone now we will find out the volume surface areas and the total surface area of a frustum using the formulas of a cone itself let's see how first of all we start labeling this cone here we have labeled op as h1 that is the height of the cone you can say op is the height of the cone now oq that is this is h2 that is height of this smaller cone now oa is equal to ob here you can see oa is equal to ob this is what the slant height the slant height is represented by l so here we'll say this is a slant height of this big cone so we have named it as l1 now oc is equal to od you can see oc is equal to od this is also the slant height but of the smaller cone so oc is equal to od is equal to l2 that is the slant height of the smaller cone now pb that is this is the r1 that is the radius of the bigger cone so this r1 we have been given that the measurement is 28 cm so let's take it as 28 cm now qd where is qd this part this white part is called radius 2 that is r2 why r2 because this represents the radius of this smaller cone so we have represented it as r2 now this is given as 7 cm now we have finished labeling all the parts of this cone now one thing is that you can say that this part that is this part is the frustum of the cone the big cone minus the smaller one so we get this frustum now this h represents the height of this frustum so you can say that h1 represents the height of the bigger cone h2 represents the height of this smaller cone and h represents the height of this frustum so we can say that h1 that is the height of the bigger cone is equal to 45 that is what height of the frustum we've been given that so 45 plus h2 that is this so now it's clear that h1 that is this part is equal to h plus h2 so instead of h we are writing 45 so 45 plus h2 so this gives us a first equation now the second equation that we want to find out the heights of both the cones we have to first prove that triangle opb is similar to triangle oqd look at the figure triangle oqd needs to be proved similar to triangle opb let's see now first of all we can see that angle pob is equal to angle qod let's see which are these angles pob that is this is equal to angle qod qod so you can see both are actually the same angles so both are common in both the triangles so these are equal now let's move to the second one that is angle bpo which is bpo bpo this one now this is 90 degree why because op that is op is perpendicular to ab similarly angle dqo dqo that is this one 
This is also 90 degree because OQ is perpendicular to CD. So both these are equal. So we can say that angle POB is equal to angle QOD because they are common. And angle BPO is equal to angle DQO, both are 90 degrees. So we can say that triangle OPB is similar to triangle OQD by the angle-angle axiom. So we have proved these two triangles similar. Now, since triangle OPB is similar to triangle OQD, the ratio of their sides will also be equal. So we can say that H1 by H2, that is what? OP by OQ is equal to R1 by R2, that is PB by QD, ratio of its sides are equal. So now let's substitute R1 by R2. So H1 by H2 is equal to what? Substitute the values of R1 and R2. R1 is 28 and R2 is 7. So 28 by 7. Four by one. So H one by H two gives us a ratio of four is to one. That is H by H one by H two is equal to four by one. This gives us our second equations. So we have got two equations in terms of H one and H two. First one is H one is equal to forty five plus H two, and the second one H one by H two is four by one. Now using these two equations, we can find out the values of H one and H two. So let's solve this. From the second equation, we can say that cross multiplying we get H1 is equal to 4H2. Now, instead of H1, we'll use 4H2 in the first equation. So let's substitute H1 here. H1 is equal to 45 plus H2. Now substituting H1 with this, we get 4H2 is equal to 45 plus H2. Or we can say, we move H2 here, so we'll get 4H2 minus H2, that is 3H2, is equal to 45. Or H2 is equal to what? 45 divided by 3, that gives us 15 centimeter. So we found out H2. Now putting 15 here, what do we get the value of H1? 45 plus 15, that gives us 60 centimeter. So from the equations 1 and 2, we found out that H2 is 15 centimeter and H1 is 60 centimeters. Now, let's move to finding out the volume of the frustum. You can see we've shaded the frustum part. Now, the volume of the frustum will be what? Volume of the bigger cone minus volume of the smaller cone. Or you can say volume of the cone OAB, that is this, minus volume of the cone OCD. So, if we minus this from we minus this green shaded part from OAB, we'll be left with the frustum part. This is what we have to find out. So let's find out these volumes. Now we know that the volume of the cone can be found out by the formula 1 by 3 pi r square h, where r represents radius of the cone and h represents height of the cone. So volume of the frustum is what? Volume of the cone OAB minus volume of the cone OCD. So let's solve this. The volume of the cone OAB is what? 1 by 3 pi r square h. So r, that is radius of the cone OAB. This is OAB. So the radius is 28. So r square, that means 28 into 28. Into h, that is the height of the cone. So the height is 60. Now minus volume of the cone OCD, so minus 1 by 3 into pi, what is the radius of OCD? It is 7, 
So 7 into 7 into H, height of the cone OCD is 15. So now let's cancel. Now 22 into 4 into 28 into 20 minus 22 into 7 into 5. We get 49,280 minus 770 centimeter cube. Why centimeter cube? Because we are finding out the volume and volume is represented in cubic units. So now solving this, we get 48,510 centimeter cube. So this is the volume of this frustum. So how did we find out the volume of this frustum? By subtracting the volume of the cone OCD from the volume of the cone OAB. So we got the volume of this frustum. Now, we have already found out the height of both the cones and the volume of the frustum as well. Now, what is left is the slant height. So let us find out the value of the slant height that is L1 and L2. Now we know that the slant height can be found out by the formula root over h square plus r square. So let us find out the slant height L1 and L2 using this formula. So let us find out L1 first. So L1 will be what? Root over h1 square plus r1 square. Now let's substitute the values of h1 and r1 in this formula to find L1. So L1 will be what? Root over h, that is h1 is 60. So 60 square plus r1, that is 28. So 28 square. Solving this we get 0.0 or we get approximately 66.20 centimeter. So we found out the first slant height that is the slant height of the big cone OAB that is 66.20 centimeter. In the same way we can find out L2 also. Find it out yourself. L2 will be what? Root over H2 whole square plus R2 whole square. So let's find out L2. It will be root over H2 square that is 15 square plus R2 square that is 7 square. What will we get? Root over 15 square that is 225 plus 7 square that is 49. So we get root over 274 that is approximately 16.55 centimeter. So we found out L2 that is 16.55 centimeter. Now as we found out the slant height, we can now find out the curved surface area of the frustum. Now we know that the curved surface area of any cone can be found out by the formula pi r l where r is the radius of the cone and l is the slant height of the cone. So here the curved surface area of the cone OAB, that is OAB. So the curved surface area of OAB minus the curved surface area of OCD. So the curved surface area of OCD here, so if we subtract this, what are we left with? We are left with the curved surface area of the frustum. This is what we have to find out. So the curved surface area of the frustum of the cone is curved surface area of cone OAB minus curved surface area of cone OCD. So let us find out this using this formula. So we can write that the curved surface area of the frustum of the cone will be what? Curved surface area of OAB that is pi R1 L1. This is what we have taken the radius and slant height of OAB R1 and L1 minus curved surface area of OCD. 
how will we find out the curved surface area of OCD? Pi R2 L2. This is what is the radius and slant height of the cone OCD. Now we know how to find out the curved surface area of the frustum of the cone. It is pi R1 L1 minus pi R2 L2, where R1 and L1 represent radius and slant height of the bigger cone, and R2 and L2 represent the radius and slant height of the smaller cone. So now let's substitute this with the values. So we can write pi, that is 22 by 7, into R1. R1 is what? 28 into L1. L1 is 66.20 minus pi R2 L2, so 22 by 7, into R2, that is 7, into L2, that is 16.55. Now let's solve this. Now solving this further, we will get 5416.5 centimeter square. So this is the curved surface area of this frustum. So we found out the curved surface area of this frustum. Now does this give us the total surface area? Well, no. To find out the total surface area, we need to have the area of these circular bases as well. We can say that the total surface area of the frustum is what? The curved surface area of the frustum plus area of the two bases. Which bases? This and this base. This has to be included with the curved surface area to find out the total area of the frustum. So let's find out the area of these two bases. So area of the two bases will be what? First base, pi r 1 square. Well, the area of any circular base is pi r square. So in this case, we'll take pi r 1 square because the radius of this base is r 1, that is 28. So pi r 1 square plus the second base is what? This one, pi r square. Here we'll take r as r 2, so pi r 2 square. Now let's substitute the values of R1 and R2 from the values here, 28 and 7. So we can write 22 by 7 into R1, that is 28 square, plus pi, that is 22 by 7, into R2 square, that is 7 square. Now we get this. Now solving it further, we'll get 2,464 plus 154 centimeter square. And adding this up, we get the area of two bases total as 2,618 centimeter square. Now, you already know that the total surface area of the frustum is the curved surface area plus the area of the two bases. We had already calculated curved surface area previously and just now we have calculated area of the two bases. So now adding these both together, we'll get the total surface area of the frustum. So we had found out that the curved surface area is 5,461.5 centimeters square, and the area of the two bases we have calculated is 2,618 centimeters square. Now adding this up, we get 8,079.5 centimeters square. And rounding it off, you get approximately 8080 centimeters square. So this is the total surface area of the frustum of a cone. So now you know that the total surface area of the frustum of a cone is the sum of the curved surface area plus the area of the two bases.